Um, <clears throat> now, the New Testament uh, clearly states that it is preferable for men to castrate themselves, become eunuchs, Matthew 19, 12. It also states that true Christians can drink poison, Matthew, Mark chapter 16, and not be harmed. Finally, it states that women must pray with their heads covered, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and that a woman speaking in church is shameful, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. My question is, why don't the vast majority of Christians follow these rules? And if they do, I would like, Mr. Wood, I have a, I have a vial of whiteout, liquid paper, highly toxic. I would like Mr. Wood to swig this bottle of whiteout. If he does not do it, then he does not agree that this is the word of God because he's a Christian and Jesus says, according to the gospel of Mark chapter 16, that he can drink poison and survive. If he does not do it, then he is admitting this is not the word of God. If he does, if he does do it and he survives, I am, I am willing to become a Christian tonight. <laughs> Did you say a bottle of whiteout? I might do that for you. Um, what were the, what, uh, I, got, I wrote down poison and women in churches. What, there was something else. Um, men uh, have to become eunuchs. It's preferable for men to become eunuchs. Christian to be poison. A woman must pray with her head covered, according to 1 Corinthians 11. A woman speaking in church is shameful, according to 1 Corinthians okay. 14. Um, <clears throat> uh, as far as the mark, that comes from uh, the end of Mark, which practically every scholar, uh, every Bible scholar in, in the world says was not authentic, um, that this was a later edition, was not authentic, um, that this was a later edition, was not authentic. Um, that this was a later edition. And so that's not in the early source material as far as, our earliest, our earliest records don't have that part about the, uh, about the poison. Um, as far as the men becoming eunuchs, Jesus wasn't talking about physically castrating him, in, themselves. Um, he didn't do that. This is, this, is a spiritual, this is a spiritual situation similar to what the Apostle Paul did where you dedicate yourself wholly to God and you, you, you don't get married so that you can dedicate your entire life to God. And he doesn't, he doesn't command them to do this. He says, you know, those who can accept this should. And Jesus did this. And of course, the Apostle Paul took this route. And I think that was, that was especially fitting during that time of, of persecution by the Romans. Um, why, why would someone go out and get married when you might get killed next year? And so there, there are reasons for these things. And, um, and even today, I would say, look, if, 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 if you're a man and you don't need a woman, or you're, you're a woman and you don't need a man, and you want to dedicate your life wholly to God, that biblically, that, that is a good route. Um, as far as women in churches, um, I'd say there, there, there are several um, interpretations of this. One is, is uh, that, well, in Corinth, the only women who were allowed to speak in public gatherings were, were the temple prostitutes. Um, that's one possible. I'm not even saying that is, a, that is an interpretation. Um, another is that um, the men already knew that they had to keep quiet and that women were allowed to come in and be taught for the first time and that Paul lays this down, hey, you need, you, you need to be quiet too. Um, I'm not saying that's, that's the correct interpretation either. But I'd say, worst case scenario, Paul says, um, you're not speaking in church and okay that would be uh, that would be that would be something to think about but the bottom line is there are other interpretations of these verses so another big difference the gospel of mark mark is probably my favorite gospel because it's so subtle and understated in places and it it, it says things that you don't expect uh, and nowhere is this more true than in the ending of Mark's gospel. In Mark's gospel, Jesus is uh, put on trial and he's crucified, he's dead, he's buried. And on the third day, the women go to the tomb. The tomb is empty and Jesus is not in it. There's some man in there. And the man tells the women that Jesus is not here, he's been raised from the dead. You, he tells the women, go tell the disciples that he will meet them in Galilee. And then it says the women fled from the tomb and they didn't say anything to anyone for they were afraid. Period. That's where it ends. That's the end of the Gospel of Mark. And you think, ay, 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 how could it end there? <laughs> I mean, they're told to tell the disciples, but they don't tell anybody. Didn't the disciples ever learn? Didn't they go to Galilee? Didn't they see Jesus? How could that be the end of the story? And that's exactly the reaction the scribes had. 
They got to that ending, they said, ay, 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 how could it end there? <laughs> and scribes then decided it couldn't add there, and so they added 12 verses. So that in your English Bibles today, you'll find 12 more verses after that, chapter, uh, after chapter 16, verse 8, and often they'll be in double brackets because the translators are t will tell you in a footnote, these verses weren't originally in here, these were added by later scribes. In these verses, uh, in these added verses, the scribes added later, uh, but we know they're added later because they're not in the earliest and best manuscripts. The writing style is different from the rest of the Gospel of Mark. And in fact, there are, uh, there are inconsistencies between this ending and the, the verses that precede it. So this is clearly an addition to the Gospel of Mark. In these final verses, according, according to these final verses, the women do go tell the disciples. The disciples do go to Galilee. They do meet Jesus there. And Jesus then tells them that they're to make the disciples of all the nations. And people who become his disciples will be able to speak in foreign languages that they previously didn't know. They'll be able to handle deadly snakes. And they'll be able to drink poison and it won't harm them. These are the verses that the Appalachian snake handlers in my part of the world use to base their liturgical practices on. I've always thought that sometime on the, on, you know, in, the, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, somebody should point out, well, you know, actually those verses aren't in the Gospel of Mark. <laughs> uh, so uh, Mark actually ends with women not saying anything to anyone, for they were afraid. Somebody added the last 12. Well, let me give you a couple.